Welcome to the SurveSafe Chapter 4 online lecture for your study guide. This is Part 2. So we know that the food handler is the single largest factor in the spread of foodborne illness. Because let's face it, food can't move itself around or cook itself. We're going to continue to explore how people can be safe around food by keeping themselves clean and working in a clean way. This will keep pathogens from their body from being spread to food. One thing, one thing that people rely on is modern science, and we have this fairly new product called hand sanitizer. The SurveSafe manual calls it hand antiseptic. It means the same thing, hand sanitizer, hand antiseptic. Basically, it's rubbing alcohol, the kind from your bathroom cabinet, in a scented gel. Alcohol does kill bacteria and can make your hands more sanitary, but hand sanitizer should never be used in place of hand washing. If an operation chooses to keep hand antiseptics, that is hand sanitizer, in the food prepper service area, they should be certified as food safe. The kind that you buy at the drugstore, like the one that's on the screen now, should not be used. My children tell me that it tastes terrible, and I've had that experience too. You're out somewhere, you use hand sanitizer, you touch a breadstick, and the breadstick tastes like that scented gel. So that in itself is enough reason not to use it, but also you should not use it because it is not certified as a food safe substance. So if you can't rely on hand antiseptic or hand sanitizer, what can you do? Well, you can concentrate on hand care because your hands are the single most constant thing that contacts food. So one of the first things you do with hand care is that you keep your nails short and clean. Now, imagine what kind of dirt and bacteria can hide under nails even if they aren't this long. So short nails are easy to keep clean and they are easier to keep sanitary. You also need to make sure that any cut that you have on your skin um, on your skin of your hand or a sore or a wound or a raw spot anything that breaks the surface of your skin and might let a bodily fluid out is covered with a bandage and then you cover that bandage with a glove or a finger cot. I don't know what a glove is but we may not know what a finger cot is. A finger cot is like the finger the finger part of a glove by itself because gloves can make your hand hot and some people don't like them they make the finger cut which would cover one finger if you had a cut on your finger and not have to wear a whole glove to make your hands hot. Food safe, uh, food safe food handlers also do not wear false fingernails. No fake nails even if they're really really cute and they do not wear nail polish. The reason for this is that it would be really disgusting for you to lose a fingernail and not notice it, or for your fingernail polish to flake and have a customer find that in their food. Who wants to find a fake nail or a flake of pink, fing, pink fingernail polish in their food? Another way that you can keep food safe is by using gloves. And in food service, the only gloves that are safe for food contact are single-use gloves. Single-use gloves are ones that do exactly what they say. You use them one time and you throw them away. They keep food safe by creating a barrier, that's a block, between your hands and your food. But you should never use gloves in the place of hand washing. Ever. And when you wear gloves, you don't come in and put on one pair of gloves and then wear them for the entire shift. There are times when you change gloves. And Serve Safe and Miss Hadley at West Coble High School are not the only people that are concerned with glove use. This is a publication from the Iowa Extension Service about glove use in retail food establishments. So you can see that this is an important aspect of food safety because a lot of people are thinking about it and producing materials to help people be safe. So it talks about why you use gloves, that is to keep your bare hands from contacting food and prevent the spread of illness and when you change your gloves when you're using them. So when you change your gloves is a fairly simple thing and it's just logical. 
the first time you would change your glove is if it gets dirty or torn. No matter long, how long you've had it on. If you're prepping chicken and you have chicken juice on your glove, you can continue prepping chicken until you are finished with that. If the glove gets a tear, then you must change it. If it gets so dirty that you don't think that it's safe, then you must change it. The next time you change a glove is before you begin a different task. So let's say you're working at the West Caldwell High School Cafeteria Annex, that is Village Inn Pizza, and you're on salad bar duty wearing your gloves and your manager changes you to pizza. The gloves you've been wearing on salad bar are clean and they're not torn, but you must change them anyway because you have changed tasks. Then think about time. Change your gloves every four hours during continual use for the same task. So if you're working wing night at Village Inn and you spend four hours restocking the salad bar, which is perfectly reasonable on wing night, um, if those gloves survive four hours without getting dirty or torn, then you have to peel those off and change them because it's been four hours. And also after you change your gloves, you have to wash your hands. Or when you change your gloves, you have to wash your hands before you put the new pair of gloves on. You also must change your gloves after you handle raw meat and poultry. Oh, for heaven's sakes. We'll just close that. You change them after you handle raw meat or poultry. That's just logical. When you handle raw chicken, after you finish with the chicken and it's safely stored or it's cooking or whatever, then you must wash your hands. If you're wearing gloves, you peel those off. Wash your hands, you move on to your next task. The other time that you need to do a glove change is before handling ready-to-eat food. So you're working salad bar and then you go to the sandwich line and you're going to be making sandwiches between salad bar and sandwiches. This is a double reason. One, you've changed tasks. Two, you're going to be handling ready-to-eat food when you make people's sandwiches. If a restaurant allows bare hand contact with food, then it must have uh, policies that cover hand washing, that is how and when you wash your hands, and personal hygiene practices, and also it should have some strict health practices about when you come to work. And you should never come to work sick, especially if your establishment allows bare hand contact with food. You must always shower or bathe before coming to work. That seems like something you wouldn't have to tell people. But it's in the Surf Safe manual because somewhere, somebody has done it and made a customer sick. So, always shower or bathe before coming to work. We're going to talk now about the proper attire for a food handler. Attire is your clothing, your jewelry, your accessories, your hat, all the stuff that makes you, uh, establishes your look. So, when you are working in food service, you need to wear proper attire. And here is a slide from a, ma a manual on food, safe food handling that comes from the United States Army. And it shows a proper food handler. A person who is a safe food handler wears a hair restraint or a hat. And your hair should not touch your collar or your clothing. It needs to be up. You must wear a clean uniform. The safe food handler always comes to work in a clean uniform and apron because dirty uniforms and aprons can contaminate food and food contact surfaces. You must remove your apron before you leave the prep area for any reason, but especially before you go to the restroom, empty trash, smoke, eat, or take a break. There is a restaurant in our town that will fire you on the spot if they see you come out of the bathroom wearing your apron. They take your checks, uh, your check tickets from your customers, they cash out your um, pay for the day, and you are fired from that moment forward. So you should always remove your apron before you leave the prep area. And for our purposes at school, you should always remove your apron before you leave the lab, even if you're just going to the classroom to retrieve an item that you have forgotten. Also, you remove jewelry from your hands and your arms. And I believe you also should not wear dangling earrings or necklaces because those can uh, break and you may not notice it because you're busy. And then it ends up in a food item. So you can remove jewelry from hands and arms. There is one thing you can wear that is a plain wedding band. You cannot wear a bracelet, including a metal bracelet, because you may love that little charm on your new charm on your bracelet, but I don't think that your customer would love it if they find it in their food. People need to have a break. They need to eat. Some people need to smoke. When you do these things, you can't be in the kitchen. That includes the prep area and the dish room. 
So if you need to eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum, then you cannot be in the prepper service area, you cannot work in the prep area, and you cannot work in areas used to clean utensils and equipment, which would include the dish room. You should also not be doing this thing when you're bussing, if you're bussing tables and picking up dirty dishes. I know it is hard to miss work when you need money. That's a hard choice to make. But there are times when you are a food handler that you must miss work. And it's a difficult thing to manage, but it is necessary for safe practice. So what you do when you are sick is you do not come to work. And there are some specific requirements about when you can come to work and when you can't when you're sick. If you have any of these symptoms, vomiting, diarrhea, or jaundice, you cannot come to work. You are excluded from the establishment. If you have jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin and eyes, you should see a doctor because you may have hepatitis A or some other serious medical condition. People who are certified to have a certain kind of disease also are excluded from a restaurant and they cannot come to work. Now there is one situation where you can come to work if you might be a little bit sick. If you have a sore throat with a fever, you can come to work and you are what they call restricted. And food handlers who are restricted can work as uh, taking out trash. They can work as a cashier unless the cashier also serves food. So at McDonald's or any fast food restaurant, you cannot come to work with a sore throat and fever because you can't be placed doing any kind of work because the cashier also handles food. So the cashier only handles money. A person who has a sore throat and fever could work as cashier. They can do trash. They could be a hostess. Although I really have a serious reservation about that because the hostess touches the menu and so does the customer. And so a pathogen could spread that way. Food handlers who must be excluded, that is kept out of the place entirely, they cannot come to work, are those that have vomiting, diarrhea, or jaundice, yellowing of the skin or eyes. And then there are some diseases that if a food worker is diagnosed with, they cannot come to work at all and these diseases must be reported to the health department. That is Salmonella typhi, Shigella SPP, Shigatoxin producing E. coli, Hepatitis A, and Norovirus. Norovirus being the number one cause of foodborne illness in the United States of America. It's responsible for the vast majority of foodborne illness and it spreads very easily. So anyone who's sick with these diseases must be excluded from the establishment and it must be reported to the health department. And then after it's reported to the health department, the employee who has had the diagnosis cannot come back to work until a doctor certifies that they are no longer a sick, no longer sick or pose a danger to anybody else. Well, it seems we've gotten to the bottom of our page. So that means that's the end of our notes page review for the day. Thank goodness.